Origin just wants to be accent. This is every political ideology explained in eight minutes, part two. Apparently, this part two. This is my channel, Paint Explainer. I saw the part one, and I'm like, okay, that's pretty well covered it, right? There was like 20 or so ideologies. I'm like, come on, how, how can there be more? Remember this, NCOM, anarcho communism? What does that mean? Or it's communism? I don't know. Yeah, neoliberalism, I heard of that one. Social, ah, they, 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 this is the one people claim of when they talk about socialism, how socialism works in today's world. I'm guessing this is the one. Socialism, democratic socialism, wouldn't that be damn SOC? I don't know. But yeah, socialistic liberalism, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. I like this channel so far. Uh, he explains things, I guess, in more general way. It's, it's, it's some, he's, it doesn't say something that we would hate on. Usually that's a rare when it comes to politics, but I guess he just keeps as a summary thing. He talks about something, he just gives a general summary of it and move on. He doesn't give anything that would be like ammunition to get angry, I guess. I mean, people would basically get angry of like, maybe he's not doing more better job by better explaining it, but that's the whole thing. If he does that, like people will be pissed off, right? So if you want to just like give summary and move on, this is the type of things you would do. So let's watch it. Remember, we'll flag my Don't forget to subscribe. So that way I know which videos to react to more. I've watched things like crowd and things, uh, you know, geopolitics, things like that. It's interesting. I'm not expert in it. So I, you know, I didn't even try to be expert in it. But yeah, I, I like to watch things like this. It's uh, really interesting to see how things are working, how what ideology and philosophies are powering what and which country, how certain movement was influenced by what. It's always interesting. So if you want to see those kind of reactions, check out the link. There you'll find it or at the end of the video. And car, YouTube does very well job of you know, recommending something based on something. So yeah, that's what Anarcho-communism. Anarcho-communism combines characteristics of anarchy and communism, advocating mm. for the abolition of private property, but the retention of personal property and collectively owned items, goods, and services. Personal property includes items intended for personal use, such as a toothbrush, a house, clothes, and a vehicle. The owner has the right to exclude others from personal items. Private property, on the other hand, usually refers to something that generates value for its owner, like a factory or a mine. Private property usually generates capital without the owner necessarily having to perform any physical labor anarcho i mean that's a, that's a one thing after me feels like a slippery slope because a lot of things can be a personal property in a way could also be private property like generous revenue especially in today's world right now let's say i, I uh, let's say i buy a mobile right it's a personal property i use mobile for any personal reason but at the same time if i use that mobile to make videos like this and make money isn't that also a private property like, uh, you know, how do you like separate something from like, which is like your personal use, but can also be a, something like a business thing, right? I understand this element, like whatever you have, it's your understandable or anything that might be like business element of it. It's owned by everybody type of way, communism, right? Uh, so I don't know. Generates capital without the owner necessarily having to perform any like you know, let's talk about those like uh, big YouTube celebrities or whatever who basically does vlogs just do their everyday activity, right? Let's say some of the celebrity makes a video, like I'm gonna brush today and just talks about brushing for some reason. There are people who have talents, who does that shit and still would be like, people will be watching in mass numbers. Like people with like 40, 50 million subscribers, things like that. How is, how do you differentiate from that to personal to private, right? physical labor. Anarcho-communism believes in the abolition of the state and all structures of capital, leading to a stateless, classless, and post-monetary society population is given full control over policymaking. Neoliberalism. Neoliberalism has multiple competing definitions. It's generally associated with policies like privatization, deregulation, globalization, free trade, and reductions in government spending in order to increase the role of the private sector in the economy and society. It's sometimes also associated, on the libertarian left side, with managerial capitalism, which advocates for the dilution of ownership within society to a point where owners can no longer exert power over businesses, and rather this power being moved towards a professional manager class. Today, the term neoliberalism is usually thought to have a highly negative connotation social democracy uh, okay social democracy advocates for economic and social interventions to promote social justice within a capitalist oriented mixed economy with both private and public 
businesses. It likes strong welfare programs, regulation of the economy in the general interest, and prefers reforms rather than revolutions. It likes the liberal democratic framework with separation of religions from the government, elections between different political parties, etc. Social democracy usually achieves the execution of welfare programs through progressive taxation. Social liberalism. Mm. While Look, man, ugh, that kind of seems like more close to what like something like Bernie Sanders and people like that talk about, right? Now, <clears throat> all things are really complex, but yeah. Look, a society is not much of a society if we can't have a safety net, right? So not having something like a healthcare and basic needs that you can give to people, doesn't matter what. If the person is your citizen, they, they should have like some kind of basis. If you're rich enough, basically, right? People usually argue like, where are you going to get the money from? I understand that element. But if you're rich enough and you can't, you have to have those safety nets, right? Now, uh, something like US or something, I don't know how rich US is in this way. Like, can they do this or not, right? People like Bernie Sanders claim they can, things like that. Like, basically they can if they're, you know, uh, tax like decent amount to rich people, right? But at the same time, the element comes from like, what if those rich people runs away? What if this and this, like, you know, right-wingers explain that, like, maybe there's truth to that, who the fuck knows? But the point is, like, as a society, you have to have, like, something like the safety net, right? Britain has, like, NHS, right? Now, I'm pretty sure NHS, if I don't, you know, if I remember correctly, it's like a free healthcare type of way. But I don't know the elements of it. Basically, it will provide you free healthcare, especially when you can't afford it, right? But while in US, like, people are, even when they're hurt, they're scared of calling, you know, 911, because how much it would cost them, right? Like this is kind of fucked up thing, especially for some uh, big rich countries. So you have to have some element of that, right? Safety net is important, otherwise you're not much of society, you're just pretending. You're still in this kind of like, a, you're still a monkey at this point, right? I know that's a stretch, but it's like in general, you can think like that. Now people have all type of elements to it, right? Uh, people can have any kind of opinions on that, but it's like, if you leave all of your like ideologies, opinions aside, just think of it as like a basic human point of view, you need a safety net. At least you can agree on that one. Social democracy says that poor people should be helped through a strong welfare state. Social liberalism focuses on making social mobility easier and on providing more equality of opportunities rather than equality in all domains. It likes a little bit of intervention from the government into the economy in the name of ensuring economic justice as well as civil liberty. Social capitalism. Uh, okay. Social capitalism is a combination of social democracy, social liberalism, and capitalism. Third way. The third way tries to reconcile right-wing and left-wing politics, combining stances from social democracy and social liberalism. It supports workfare, which is a governmental plan under which people are required to accept <laughs> I'm going public this, service I'm going jobs or to participate in okay, job training I didn't know to this. obtain the benefits. It also seeks a compromise between a purely free economic system as supported by classical liberals and a welfare state as supported by social liberals. One of the third way's key goals is to create a social investment state, which helps people climb the social ladder through workforce development and education, rather than handouts. Marxism. Mm. Marxism has developed over time into various branches and schools of thought, so no single definitive Marxist theory exists. Classical Marxism seeks to create a communist society. It makes a distinction between the minority who owns the means of production, called the bourgeoisie, and the vast majority of the population who produce goods and services, called the proletariat. It says that capitalism exploits and oppresses the proletariat, making it an economically unsustainable model as it causes proletarian revolutions. Marxism also believes Look, there is a truth to that only at a point like humans are going to be humans. But apart from that, so far, we don't see that really. Capitalism is working, right? I mean, that's the only thing you can think of. You can dissect a lot of things. You can come to any conclusion. But right now, capitalism is working. Now, obviously, there are going to be examples where capitalism people say, let's see, because of this is not working. There could be a thousand examples of it. But the point is, majority of the example, capitalism is somewhat working, right? Now, obviously, rich people exploiting things and trying to stay rich is going to be there. So the element like in capitalism, bourgeoisies are going to like suppress the like one person is going to suppress 99 percent. That's always going to happen because those one percent are still human and they're going to act like humans. Right. If you become one percent, doesn't matter how good you think of yourself, you will be something like that. Right. I mean, maybe you'll be less of compared to someone like just a Jeff Bezos or somebody, maybe. But you'll be something similar to that. You'll justify that in any means necessary. But that doesn't mean capitalism is not working.
believes that history can be viewed in stages of development based on which class holds a dictatorship over the other classes, and that today, the world is under the dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. Following the overthrow of the bourgeoisie, Marxism believes that a dictatorship of the proletariat must be established to eradicate capitalism and begin the transition to communism. This stage, where the working class has absolute power over all other classes and has ownership of the means of production, is usually mm. called socialism. Ah. Leninism. Uh, right. Leninism, also known as Bolshevism, things, believes apparently. in the establishment of a dictatorship of the proletariat led by a revolutionary vanguard party. The revolution vanguard party should be composed of the most educated workers, with the objective of educating larger sections of the working class and starting the revolution. Neo-libertarianism. <laughs> Neo-libertarianism <laughs> thinks that the liber- I like how they're taking like very minority people who think they're better than them they should be eradicated by giving power to the very minority of them but among them who are some of them they're better of them basically should rule them teach them and basically move from there like mm, okay libertarians value of freedom from interference by other people is incompatible with a strictly limited government and thus it is generally supportive of government involvement in society as long as it promotes greater liberty it is sometimes associated with neoconservatism which is the idea that typically advocates the promotion of democracy and interventionism in international affairs including peace through strength classical liberalism Classical liberalism thinks that individual freedom and a free market create a balanced economic equilibrium as long as monopolies aren't allowed to develop and destroy competitiveness. It sees free trade as a path to universal peace mm. and prosperity, and it likes as little government intervention as possible. If compared to social liberalism... <laughs> <laughs> okay, how are you gonna have little government intervention when your ideology says, like, there shouldn't be any monopolies and it should be like competition shouldn't be suppressed. Only way you can do that is like some kind of like a organization stepping in or putting some rules here and there. Because as soon as people get big, bigger are gonna get even more bigger. They are gonna get even more bigger and suppress more and more competition. Look at Amazon. Everything Amazon has done is suppress everyone around it to become a juggernaut that is today. It wouldn't have gotten there without crushing the competition. It thinks more if there was some like, like some rules or regulars that prohibited them trying to do that, which is anti-freedom in a way, sure, I mean, you can argue that. But if, they, if somebody, something has forced something like that, Amazon wouldn't have been where they are today. So if you want little government intervention, you can have the first thing. Or negatively about social policies and taxation, and it advocates deregulation. Anarcho-capitalism. Anarcho-capitalism is anarchist because it doesn't like a centralized state, and it's capitalist because it likes systems of private property enforced by private agencies, free markets, and self-ownership. As no centralized state would exist, there would be no taxation, and private companies would take the role of the police. Nationalism. Nationalism holds the belief That's that the nation want, should no. be congruent with the state. <laughs> a nation is a large type of social organization where a collective identity has emerged from a combination of shared features across a given population, such as language, history, ethnicity, etc. A state is a centralized political organization that imposes and enforces rules over a population within a territory. One of nationalism's key goals is to maintain its sovereignty over its homeland, usually through a nation state. It holds that each nation should govern itself, free from outside interference. When a nation puts its own interests above all others at any cost, it's called ultranationalism. The opposite of ultranationalism is universal nationalism, Georgism. Georgism, also known as the single tax movement, thinks that although people should own the value that they produce themselves, the value derived from land should belong equally to all members of society. It believes that there should only be one tax, the land value tax, because it views property rights as only extending to the properties of labor and capital, and since land is neither, it's free real estate. Radicalism. Okay, radicalism, or something. radical liberalism, was a historical set of movements within classical liberalism and represented the left wing of the historical movement. Radical liberalism took the principles behind liberalism and applied them to its conclusion. For example, a classical liberal might espouse that a democratic system of government and the right to vote should be given. In turn, a radical liberal would take such a statement to its conclusion that being that women, those without property, immigrants, slaves, etc., should all be given the right to vote. Corporatocracy. Don't they? Hold up there, what did I miss there? In turn, a radical liberal would take such a statement to its conclusion that being that women, those without property, immigrants, slaves, etc., should all- Thank you, what are nice to women, the homeless, immigrants, and slaves? So I'm guessing classical liberalism only gives vote to the people who own a land or something, right? Otherwise you don't get a vote. So, uh, 
if you're born in a country, you're automatically a citizen of that country. Don't you get vote automatically because of them, regardless of if you're homeless or not? Isn't that already the thing? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this was like an issue back then. I don't know. I'll be given the right to vote. Corporatocracy. Corporatocracy is an economic system in which the state intervenes within the economy for the benefit of a select number of corporations, especially in the context of squashing competition. A variant of corporatocracy is lemon socialism, which is a pejorative term for an economic system based on a government that offers subsidies to weak, bad, or bankrupt companies so that they remain in the market. Cyberocracy. <laughs> Cyberocracy represents... Uh. No, we're making it so the natural selection doesn't matter. It's just like you'll always have a safety net, which is like, hmm, okay. There's one thing. There's one thing to have a safety net. There's completely another thing to basically making sure any means necessary, everybody stays afloat, even if it like an entire country suffers. Presents the advocacy of a government basically that is largely automated or partially automated and de facto ruled by computers and artificial intelligence. Integralism. Integralism is the principle that the church should be the basis of public law and public policy within civil society. It's usually a deeply traditionalist <laughs> doctrine, and it doesn't like secularism. Reactionarism. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, it. that's the point. How would it like secularism? Yeah. So it's like we basically Vatican. Vatican 2.0 everywhere. Yeah, imagine if we t take in a time machine and come back like 500 years from now. That's the thing everywhere. Like religion is the government now. I don't know why we always assume like things might degrade in a way, right? Like everything might sacrifice for one element. I mean, that's if if you like don't separate religion from everything, like you know, separate from state and church. If you don't do that, just give every power to the religion. A lot of things can be sacrificed in the name of you know the freedom part can be sacrificed a lot. And we we always think of the future as something similar to that, right? Like look at the Warhammer universe. People just fantasize about that. And it's always like some like grim dark shit. We, we, just, we just have this mentality like, okay, so things are going to go to shit in the future. That's what I am sure. Reactionarism is a philosophy that advocates for the restoration or preservation of traditional social, political, and economic systems. It is characterized by a rejection of progressive or liberal ideas and a belief that society has become too modern or innovative. Jacobinism. <laughs> it's the philosophy of a complete dismantling. Society so becomes too more innovative. So what's the opposite? Stay in your cave? Let's go back to, yeah. ...of an old system with a completely radical and new structure. It's historically seen as one of the most revolutionary and important movements throughout modern history, as it played a huge role in the French Revolution, where monarchy was abolished and replaced by a republic. I'll be making a part three. Subscribe and activate the bell to see it. What the f*** is more? <laughs> How many things are there, man? How many ideologies? Damn. <coughs> This one was good one, man. Some of them were like, okay, okay, I, obviously why it was good one. The original one had the most main things, like main ideologies you think of. This is more complex ones, which is like interesting. With the third one going to be even more complex and things you've never heard of? I guess, yeah, sure, why not? Right, well, that was every political ideology explained in 8 minutes, uh, part 2 by the channel Paint Explainer. If you like my reaction to fun, subscribe. If you haven't seen my reaction to the first one, I guess, uh, check out the link in the description on the end card. I'm pretty sure YouTube will tell you. And yeah, I'll see you next time.